So, Driggis, do you uh, do you let yourself get excited yet for a fight, or do you have to wait until it's like Saturday morning and you're walking <laughs> to the cage? Well, that's a good question. Uh, when we when we arrived on the airport, I was just I looked as we walked in, and I was like, oh, here we go again. This is awesome. And I looked at uh, my teammate traveling with me, and I just said, no, I'm not getting excited. I'll give it to like Tuesday around Tuesday. If, if we're still fighting on Tuesday, we're most probably going to have ourselves a fight. But it's really hard to stay to get that excited and uh, knowing what happened the last few times. Yeah. Talk to me about, I guess, April, the last time. I mean, just how frustrating was that whole experience for you? And I mean, I, I don't know. Is it just, do you just deal with it? Or is it really hard in your career to think you've kind of installed a little bit? Yeah, I mean, but uh, I'm fighting number 12 in the world right now. So <laughs> we're good. We're good. I mean, my first fight was Chris Curtis, who wasn't uh, really uh, ranked. But that was a big fight. He's, he's taken out some, some, some very, very good opponents. And then getting uh, Anthony Hernandez, who's ranked quite a bit further back. But, I mean, it was only my third fight. So I'm, I was happy to, to go out there, put on an amazing performance, and then getting my big shot. And then, of course, the Calvin Gastelum uh, opportunity coming in. And, I mean, I felt ready to fight the number one in the world uh, uh, for April 9th. I was, I was ready to fight anybody. Uh, that opportunity came, and I was immediately ready for it. And, of course, the big up and then the big down. That's, that's the name of the game in MMA, I guess. But, I mean, it was frustrating in the sense that I was so ready to go out and perform. It wasn't the fact that I would have been number eight, which was obviously a great jump for me. It was the fact that uh, I felt so ready to go out and perform, and uh, I was in great shape. All the hard work already started cutting weight. I mean, if you get your fight canceled four weeks or three weeks or two weeks out, that's one thing. But... On fight week, it stings a little, but I mean, I had my two days of sulking and I had to get over it. Uh, went to Sanford, spent uh, four or five weeks there. Um, got some amazing training in, so good to be back there. Uh, went back home with my, with my team in South Africa and we started camping for this fight. So, I mean, everything will work out the way it should, like it always does. And the stars aligned once again and here I am, international fight week. Yes, we've been delayed a little, but I mean, with COVID, all that being done now, the, hopefully no more delays will come. And this is going to be massive. This is the biggest card of the year. Once again, I'm fighting on, and I can't be more excited. What are your thoughts on Brad as an opponent? I mean, a guy that's obviously been around for a long time. He's been in the rankings for a long time. What do, what do you think about him as an opponent? Yeah, I think uh, they're really not doing me any favors getting into the top 15. Uh, he is an incredible tough opponent. I think he's, uh, he's always been in game. He's always comes to fight. He's always in shape. He's you won't see this guy just gassing out in a fight because he didn't prepare. You don't see this guy just going away because he's getting... I mean, he fought Joel Romero. He, he stayed competitive till the end. Uh, he got beat pretty badly by a champ, but it wasn't like he just showed up. He tried to get that fight. He tried to get the champ out of there every chance he got. But, you know, he's not fighting one of those guys. He's fighting me. He is an incredible fighter. I think uh, he's always has been, but I do think he's never quite progressed. If you look at his age, if you look at all of his fights, if you look at from day one to now, not a lot of change happening in his style. He's, he's not going to shoot for the takedown, is he? No. He's not going to uh, start to strike more uh, strategically. No. He's going to come out there and bang. It's traditional Muay Thai style, trying to throw the heavy leg, leg kicks. He's gonna, that's what he's going to do. He's, he's always fought like that and it's worked for him and it hasn't worked for him, but no. That's the way he fights. He's not going to change anytime soon. So respect to him. He's an amazing athlete and he's a really, really tough fighter and a great gatekeeper. But uh, there's a new generation coming through. Last thing for me, I'll ask you, I mean, what's the goal here? Like, obviously you want to win, but, you know, with this year away, do you feel like you've got to do something spectacular, like regain some momentum that maybe you lost? Or is it just, you know, beat a ranked opponent and see where you end up? Like, what's the goal for you? Yeah, to be honest, it doesn't even feel like a year for me. Uh, geez, it feels like just... Uh, the other day I was sitting here with you guys, the exact same arena, International Fight Week. Uh, I've, I don't feel I've lost any momentum. I mean, in training, my mindset has been prepping for fights for the whole time. So, I mean, it's not like, in my mind, this is fighting two months after my last fight. I don't feel uh, that I've been out of the cage for a year at all. I don't feel that I lost any momentum. Uh, and any momentum lost, anybody that might have forgotten my name, <laughs> let me remind you, it's Trigger Stiplessy. And uh, everybody will be reminded again on uh, Saturday night. Drinking us back here. All the way back here. Oh, How's it hey, going? 
The one good thing about being out for a year is it gives you a lot of time to evolve and improve in a lot of ways. So how, how do you feel like you have evolved the most over this last year while you're waiting to get back in the octagon? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, if it's just uh, your mindset in terms of, of who I fought and who I'm fighting right now, that alone, being considered as the guy to fight Calvin Gastelum already tells me everything I need to know of what the organization, what everybody thinks, where, what my worth is, where I need to be fighting. Uh, I've had two fights in the UFC, being able to, the UFC calling it on me to say, listen, will you take that Gastelum fight? That already tells me what I need to know. They also think I'm a future champion. And that mental battles, the mental battles I had to go through by fights getting cancelled, getting a surgery, injuries, three opponents cancelled, all that, it only made me stronger. And that is only the mental part. Physically, watching fights, seeing the sport evolve as you watch these events. I mean, if you look at the past few events, the guys are just incredible. And that just motivates me to step it up. It motivates my whole team. It motivates every part of me to know and see where the sport is going firstly, and secondly, knowing and seeing that what we've been doing is growing in the right direction. And what does a win over a guy like Brad do for you? Like, it, it builds back, continues your momentum, but where do you think this puts you in the division with the victory on Saturday? You know, uh, in, my, in my head, obviously the, the goal is to be the, the champion. 100%, I have no, no doubt that that's where I'll end up. But Brad Tavares is my third fight. He fought easy on his third fight. He fought the champion. The champion did beat him, but he didn't get him out of there. So I'm not saying I'm going to go out there and be reckless and just try and do something spectacular. I'm going to do what I do. The way I fight is always exciting, always has been. I'm going to go out there and try and be me. I'm going to go out there and fight and get Brad Tavares out of there before, the, before that third round battle goes. I don't want to leave this to the judges. It's not, it's not my thing. And uh, I want to do what the champ in under three rounds what the champ couldn't do in five. And then last thing for me, you want, your goal is to get to the title, and the main event of this card is for the title in your division, Israel Adesanya versus Jared Kennedy there. Curious to get your thoughts on the fight and, and who you think will come out of that one with, with the belt. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, amazing fight. Both guys are incredible in their own way. Uh, Jared Kennedy uh, going from heavyweight, a big heavyweight, to light heavy, uh, 185. Incredible shape. He's a he's just a beast of a man. He's he is really it's inspiring his story the way he's the, the things he's done and working his way up especially if you look at his age working his way up uh, Against all these youngsters all these guys that are young and hungry and he just he just keeps that uh, That uh, hunger inside of him. It's amazing. Then of course the champion is there's no denying how great he is uh, I think it's a it's an amazing matchup. I honestly just see Easy being too slick, being too quick, and um, yeah, uh, Cannonier is a he's a great striker. He hits hard, and listen, anything can happen if he catches you. You're in big trouble, but I don't believe he has the wrestling to uh, neutralize the stand up of, of of the champ. And I think the champ is going to be too long, too slick, and just too uh, calculated for him. Hey, Drake is over here. Just to piggyback off that question, Israel is about a four-to-one betting favorite going into this fight. Do you think the odds are a bit off there? Because Jared obviously has some serious knockout power. Anytime in, in MMA when the odds are four-to-one, there's something wrong there. Okay. And uh, you trained with Shabkat Rachmanov. He had a really big win last week over Neil Magny. What did you make of his performance or just how dominant he was? Wow. I mean, the, the guy is unbeaten and an incredible fighter. He's... Uh, I mean, uh, going and finishing Neil Magny, that doesn't happen every day. Uh, he is an incredible wrestler. He's an incredible grinder, and he just, uh, he just sinked that guillotine in. It wasn't that his opponent was tired or shooting desperately. He just took that guillotine. He didn't wait for it. Uh, definitely somebody to watch. And uh, speaking of someone to watch, what's been the support from the South African fans going into this fight? It's one thing to fight on a UFC card, but to be on International Fight Week, the spotlight's even bigger. How much has that sort of you know, given you a nice boost going into this fight? Absolutely. I mean, after the two fights, uh, it just grows and grows and grows. And, uh, you know, South Africa couldn't be uh, more excited. It feels uh, on the same day that we're fighting, the Springbok rugby team is, uh, is playing, and I know they're going to get that win, and then I'll be carrying on that momentum. So the whole country is already excited. And this is basically two Springbok uh, World Cup games happening in one. It's the Springboks playing, and uh, then I'm going to bring it home for the, for the country. And 
everybody is so excited. Places are booked out. Uh, people are doing watch parties. It's going to be massive, and people are just getting more excited for every event and every event. And I'm I'm really excited about that. Drake is back here. Anyway. Hey, hey. Way over here, right? Uh, I, I saw that you were working with Sanford and you referred to that. Will you have any of the coaches from Sanford in your corner or is it just the CIT team? Uh, yeah, I've, I've been working for, with Sanford for quite a while. Uh, go out there uh, as often as I possibly can. The uh, first time I went was like four or five years ago, but with COVID I wasn't able to go there for two years. So after the fight got cancelled now, in April we went, uh, I spent some uh, four or five weeks at, at Sanford and I'm really well acquainted there, and uh, we do a lot of cross training with with Sanford. That's that's the basically what we're doing: cross training between me, between CIT and Sanford. But uh, my my team uh, that got me ready for that that I camp with is CIT, and that's will be in my corner. Following you on social media, how many times did you go back and forth from the states to South Africa and back in this camp? Oh, luckily, I just, uh, <laughs> I, after the fight, I stayed for a couple of weeks, like I said, and uh, then went back to South Africa, camped there, and now we're back here. So it's basically, I just went back, did my camp, flew back in. And then my final question, you know, refer to it, we have an African-born champion in Adesanya headlining the card. You've talked about it, your own hopes to see UFC Africa and being a part of it, I mean... Does it feel more motivating when you see, you know, the impact of Nganu and Usman and being on the undercard now of one of those champions? Yeah, I mean, for me, um, uh, my fight got moved up to the prelims, if I'm not mistaken. And that's great. It sucks that I have to celebrate being on the prelims. But uh, I, I said this for the first fight. My first fight was on the main card, but it was a much smaller card. Second fight, prelims, great. Conor McGregor, Poirier, three. And here I come... Massive fight card, early prelims, enjoy that. And I was like, well, if I get another knockout, will they put me on for a pre-prelim fight? Um, but, well, moved up to the prelims, and I guess they, uh, if they want to if they wanna keep me there, go for it. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting the exposure I need. Fighting on the big cards is what I want, and I'm just going to keep on performing. And uh, at the end of the day, that performance is going to get me to the main card, and... I mean, I don't know what else I can do, but I'll just keep on performing. That's my job, to get in there, fight, get a performance, and uh, perform the way I know I can and like I have been doing. Motivating me, they don't motivate me. I motivate me. Fighting for my country, fighting for myself, um, coming from, from South Africa, that motivates me. Seeing that African-born champions is a thing in the UFC motivates me 100%. But I'm self-motivated. I'm motivated by carrying my country's flag, knowing that I live in that country, knowing that that is the country I represent. 100% I am part of that country every single day of my life. And I'm coming over here and I'm representing them, carrying that flag, and it's an absolutely massive honor. It's a big responsibility. And with, great, uh, with that, that, that responsibility is just so big that it makes me feel big. It makes me understand the magnitude of this situation and how important it is for me to perform. And I love that because that makes me perform. Trikus, what think you about your opponent and who's seen you at the fight at Loop? Simon, how are you? My brother, we're going to be very happy with you. Ah, very happy with you. Yeah, so what think you about your opponent, Brad, and who's seen you at the fight at Loop? Ik denk hij is een ongelooflijke opponent. Ik denk hij is uh, iemand wat, wat uh, hij al alles gezien, 20, 21 fights uh, in, die, in die UFC. So, ik kan niet, ik kan niet denken dat hij rief om iets niets gaan wees nie. Maar toe dat ik loop lei, dan gaan het voor iets niets wees. Hij heeft al baie mense gefight, hij het die champion gefight, maar hij het my nog niet gefight nie. Hij het nog niet die Afrikaanse woordkie gefight nie. So, ons gaan hy sien en ik geloof, dit zal die eerste skok van zijn loopbaan wees. En alhoewel ik denk hij is een ongelooflijke fighter, denk ik niet als een manier wat hij recht is of wat komt. En hoe voelt dit om Zuid-Afrika te vertienwoordig? Ongelooflijk. Om hier te gaan zitten, Afrikaans te praten en te weten dat er miljoenen mensen wat mij verstaan. Uh, dit alleen is mij ongelooflijke groot eer. En ik zal een vlag dragen en ik zal voor Zuid-Afrika weer eens op die wereld zijn grootste platform wijs wat ons kan doen. En die hoop wat het geeft, die 
die inspiratie wat gee vir allemaal in Zuid-Afrika, dat is niks wat ons so een maak, so sport, en ek kan nie wacht om, om zaterdagavond weer die hele land op hulle voete te hee, en te sien hoe allemaal ongelooflik blij is in die support, en dit is net ongelooflik. Dankie my broer, ons vir jou. Ons vir jou. Thank you.